Good afternoon folks, welcome back to our, is this our second last? Second last part of National 5 Chemistry, I think it might be. Um, I would like to introduce you to a brand new homologous series called the Carboxylic Acids. Uh, this is SQA, pages bottom of 53 through to 56, and Scholar 104 through to 118. Um, they are a new homologous series, as we said before. Uh, let's have a look, first of all, at... We'll have a look at their structure, we'll have a look at their formula, and then we'll have a look at what we use them for. Um, yeah, let's, that, this is one of the most common ones. I do enjoy this on my food. In fact, this particular carboxylic acid, that's its structure there. It's got two carbons in it. There are no double bonds between the carbons. There is uh, an oxygen linked to a hydrogen, which is similar to what we've seen in the alcohol group, but this carbon here also has a double bond to an oxygen. So this is the typical structure of a carboxylic acid, folks. Let me find a different colour pen. There we go. Um, they have got a number of carbons in their skeleton, and at the end of that skeleton of carbons, there's a double bond to an oxygen, and an oxygen which is linked to a hydrogen, which we usually just put down like that. And of course, there would be H's on here. Uh, does this appear anywhere else in the middle of the chain? Nope, it's always got to be at the end, because if you have a look, it takes up three out of the four bonds. So this is the recognisable part. This is the functional group um, of a carboxylic acid. Let me just check and see whether you need to know the name because you did know, need to know the name of the OH when it was by itself in an alcohol, that was a hydroxyl group. Excuse me, to, I'll just check the notes. Yes, you do, in fact. So, uh, let me get a different colour pen, and we'll circle it, and we shall name it. So, this here, folks, is the carboxyl group. Of course, that's where they get their name from. So this is the carboxyl group. You find it in all carboxylic acids at the end of the chain. You're required to know what the first uh, eight carboxylic acids, um, just like the first eight alcohols and the first eight alkanes and alkenes. You're not required to know any names of any branches or anything like that. And you'll be glad to know that the actual naming is dead easy. Because this one here has a chain of three carbons. So it's going to be prop. There's all single bonds between the carbons, so it's prop an. And then the ending here, because it's a carboxyl group, is the carboxylic acids. So this is propanoic acid. That's how we get that prop an oic acid. Um, it will, of course, I'm hoping you can realize, start with methanoic acid. Let me just make that for us. Excuse me, off camera. This is the slightly odd-looking, simplest, first carboxylic acid. Um, so let me draw what that would be. That would be just C, double bond O, OH. That's our carboxyl group. And then it's not actually linked to, to any other carbons. It's just that. Um, on the next sheet, what I'm going to do is do some examples of some names and three different representations of their structure. Right, folks, so I've got here, um, I've picked the first three uh, of the alkanoic, uh, sorry, carboxylic acids, showing my age. Um, there is the full molecular representation of them. Here's the shortened version, and here is the molecular formula. There's a few different ways. This is a weird looking one, and there's a few different ways that it could be shown. Um, once you get up in the chain, it becomes slightly easier to deal with. Down the bottom here, by the way, just for reference, I've got, this is, well, you can maybe pause the screen and tell me which, what's the name of this one. There is a classic mistake, by the way. There's a classic mistake when naming these. It's to look at the CH3 here and the 6 here and say, oh yeah, it's got seven carbons. And then that is a carboxylic acid, so it's heptanoic acid. That is wrong, because 1 and 6 makes 7, but that one also makes 8. So that is octanoic acid. Just watch for that. That was a mistake I tended to make. Don't be daft like me. Get it right. 
So here's what I'd like to look at for these carboxylic acid homologous series. I'd like to look at their physical properties, I'd like to look at what we use them for, and I'd like to look at their reactions. Um, let's take a look at the physical properties first. The SQA are keen to for you to know. Um, let me check what, exactly what they went into, because there's some oddball things. Solubilities. Um, they want you to know that the first four carboxylic acids dissolve in water. So from C1 to C4, that's uh, methanoic to butanoic, they are soluble in water. And after that, they don't dissolve anymore, for reasons that we'll come back to at higher. Um, they want you to know the liquids at uh, room temperature. And they want you to know, of course, that because we're dealing with a homologous series, then if you increase... Then, excuse me. That's better. Now the phone stopped ringing in the background. If you, uh, if you plot the boiling points uh, or the melting points against the number of carbons, then you get a line that looks like that. They uh, want you to know, this applies by the way, see this graph here, super important, I think I forgot to mention in some of my earlier homologous series, this applies to all homologous series, and the SQA want you to know why. They want you to know that as you add more and more carbons to the molecule, the forces that stick each molecule to its neighbour become stronger. And that's why you have to put more energy in to raise the boiling point. Um... Sorry, let me rephrase that. You don't raise the boiling point. You have to put more energy in to boil the molecules when there are more carbons in the chain. So the more carbons you have along here, the more these molecules stick to their neighbour more strongly. And that's actually why the boiling point increases as the number of carbons increase. We're not quite sure what these forces are, but we will tackle them next year in higher chemistry. So, physical properties, liquids at room temperature, they are a homologous series, they all react in similar chemical ways, and they have a regular increase in the boiling point caused by this increasing mystery force holding each molecule to its neighbour. Um, uses. Let's have a look at uses now. So, the SQA are keen for you to know that carboxylic acids can be used to make preservatives, um, soaps, medicines... And they also want you to know that vinegar, in fact, is the second in this series. So vinegar's proper name is ethanoic acid. And that's the molecule there. It's at this point in the video that all proper YouTubers would mention their sponsor. So let's show today's sponsor. Now, this is a jar of beetroot. And it says on the side, once opened, keep in a fridge, and then you have to eat it within a period of four weeks after you open. That's a month. Now, that's not necessarily because it's in the fridge. If you ever go to a fish and chip shop and they've got a jar of pickled onions on the shelf, um, then it's the same idea. This is sliced beetroot in vinegar. So this is beetroot in slices, in, sorry, in a solution of this stuff. And this is a preservative. It helps to kill off bacteria. For reasons that the biology uh, department may or may not tell you about, um, it is a preservative. Preservative? Yes, it is. Um, so, uh, vinegar is used in household cleaning products because it's non-toxic and it can be used safely in your house situation, to quote the SQA. Yeah, so, carboxylic acids vary in their toxicity, but this one, not particularly toxic at all. And has quite a few handy uses. Uh, so preservative, soaps, cleaning uh, solutions. That's one of the many things that uh, carboxylic acids can be used for. Which takes us to category three of the stuff I want to talk in this video about. Reactions of carboxylic acids. They are, the clues in the name, an acid. So therefore their pH is less than seven. They're not burning your face off type of acids, obviously, otherwise... This would not go well when I enjoyed a slice of it with my dinner. I've just realised that I put beetroot juice on the table. My wife is going to kill me. Um, so where are we? What's the reactions you need to know about these guys? According to the SQA here, it says here that you're supposed to know that they're acidic. Therefore, like the other acids, they can react with three different things and forming salts in the process. If you cast your minds back to acids and bases... Um, they, they being the acids, could react with actually four things. 
Don't suppose you could pause the video and shout at the screen and tell me what four things were the four categories of base? Oh, that's a horrible question to ask. So, they can react with metal oxides. They can react with metal hydroxides. And they can react with metal carbonates. They being the carboxylic acids. The SQA don't actually want you to know, interestingly, that they can also react with the fourth category of base, which is ammonia. Carbo no, 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 carbonates, sorry. So I'm very tired, it's late, and I'm trying to think of two things at once. And I'm failing, I do apologise. So, metal oxides, metal hydroxides, metal carbonates. Those are three things that carboxylic acids will react with. Now, just down here in pink for a second, can I cast your mind back to that and say that if you had either of these two, they would react with an acid and they would make a salt and water. These guys here, metal carbonates, would react with an acid and they would make a salt and water and carbon dioxide. Well, the good news is it's precisely the same for carboxylic acids. So you will make a salt, an H2O, they will make exactly the same. These guys here make a salt, an H2O, and carbon dioxide gas. So what's the tricky part? Well, the slightly tricky part is how you name the salt. What is the name of the salt? And the SQA want you to know this, so I'll spend a couple of minutes filling you in on it. Cast your minds back to, for example, if you had a metal carbonate, so if you had, say, sodium carbonate, and that reacted with hydrochloric acid, you would make sodium chloride. That would be your salt. How does it work with the carboxylic acids? You don't need to know the formula, but you do need to know the name. So let's have a look at that right now. So if we had sodium carbonate, And you react it with that with. Um, so at this point, if I was in a class, I would get somebody to pick an acid. Now let's pick the one that I hate the most out of the carboxylic acids, which is butanoic acid. The reason is I'm afraid of being sick, and this is in vomit, so it smells like vomit to me, and I don't like it. Now, how do you name the salt? Well, if you have a look at how we name the salt here. We took the first part of the salt's name from the base. That is still going to be the same. We took the second part from the negative ion here. So we are going to make sodium. But what do we do with this name here? We modify this name very slightly. We get rid of the acid because it's no longer an acid. Now if it's no longer an acid, we change the ending here. We get rid of the ick because it's no longer a carboxylic acid, and we add 8 to it. Which is ironic for something that smells like vomit. <laughs> um, so we will make sodium butan O8. So that's what you do, guys. You take the base, you take the metal ion from the base, you take the butanoic acid, you chop off the ick, and you add 8 to it instead. So one more example of that just before we leave. If we had say um, potassium hydroxide and methanoic acid. You would make the salt here which would be this ion here which is potassium. And we take this, chop off the ick and you would make Nathan O8. Fun fact before we go. The stuff that's inside a reusable hand warmers, I don't know if you ever used one of these, is actually a salt of a carboxylic acid. It's an incredibly high concentration salt and it is sodium ethanoate. So it's basically the same stuff as they put on cheap salt and vinegar crisps. Because sodium ethanoate gives you a salty taste and it also gives you a vinegary taste because it's the ion 
from ethanoic acid, which is truly in vinegar. And I think that's us done for today. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.